Premier League opposition for you. Uh, where do, where does this competition lie in terms of your priorities? Well, it's certainly not the the first priority because that's the Premier League above all else. Um, but that being said, you know, like all managers, you want to field a team that you believe can win. I mean, with fans back in the stadium as well, I mean, they'd love a good cup run, wouldn't they? So, you know, it's important to them for, for you to field a, a strong side, I'm sure. Well, it's the importance is what it is. You know, we've never not shown any importance to the cup competitions. I've always had respect for them. Um, it's just a simple reality that I've said every season that I've been here that the main priority is the league, whether you're in the championship trying to win it, as we have done, or whether you're in the Premier League trying to be in it, then it's always going to be a priority. So are you, are you prepared? And is it likely you're going to give uh, other members of the squad a, a first-team run-out? Yeah, with the injuries that we've got, it's very likely that players who haven't played as much, um, well, in the first couple of games, obviously, uh, but players that have been playing during pre-season. Um, so, yeah, it's likely that there will be some changes. I mean, it's a, it, it's a tough game, despite, you know, it's two teams who've played two, lost two. It probably means even more, doesn't it, to get that first win on the board? No, it means even more in the league. That's where it means a lot. Um, you know, the cup competition can't win you a league game. Um, what it does, it reaffirms to you the team that you think can win league games or the players that you think can uh, go into a side to win your league games. Um, you know, we never thought anything other than we have a, we've got a tough start on, on paper, that is. It doesn't always play out like that. Um, so we know that. And, and having a, a Premier League club in the, in the Cup is obviously another tough game, uh, particularly away from home. So that's one of them things. But we'll be ready. You, you played well, didn't you, at Anfield, particularly in the, in the first half. I mean, that's that's great for confidence, isn't it, as far as your, you, you know, your whole season is concerned? Yeah, mostly. I mean, you know, it happened to us last season a little bit early on. We'd, we'd had a, a few more injuries, obviously, but we, we made a few mistakes in games when actually we delivered pretty pretty solid performances. Um, once we eradicated them, them mistakes, we started turning around and winning games and performing, uh, or performances started getting us points on the board. And, you know, so we want to do that quicker, uh, sooner rather than later, rather. But, you know, it's, it's not an easy task going to some of these grounds and, and particularly to Anfield, um, you know, and all the uh, feeling in the stadium on the day. Um, you know, I've been there many times, fortunately, and, you know, I've never quite heard the crowd uh, sing Walk Alone that loud, um, you know, because I think they were buzzing to be back in there. And, uh, you know, look, I am across the board as well. You know, we want supporters in stadiums, um, quite obviously. Um, so, yeah, all the things that were going on around Liverpool Football Club for that game, I thought we delivered a good performance, you know, from looking at it from our own point of view. Didn't get nothing from it, but performances over a season, I'm a great believer, get your points. What did you make of Jurgen Klopp's comments around it's like we're going 10 to 15 years backwards? I mean, he obviously wants his players protected. Yeah, I mean, look, every manager has the right to have their say. Um, he certainly had his. I think across football, it seems to me, the feedback has probably been uh, considerably opposite to that. Um, you know, I think... The facts are, the way I look at it, you've got a referee there of some eight, 900 games who didn't book anyone, didn't give a card out. So it is quite bizarre when you look at it like that, just factually, how he could suggest that there were some untoward challenges. My main disappointment, actually, is not a view of the game. I think every manager, every coach, every pundit, every fan has a, has a view of a game. Uh, my disappointment is he's name-checking players and absolutely no need to do that. You know, we've got pro professional players who work very, very hard in their careers to get to where they've got to. Um, and the, the implication of them being untoward in some of their challenges, I think, is wrong. I think it's inappropriate. Um, it's not something that I do myself, as you all know. I very rarely, if ever, mention about individuals. I might imply some things, but I don't name them. I don't name other managers. Very rarely, actually, do I name managers. I certainly don't go on about other teams' styles. Now they go out about it. So I think, therefore, there's a little balance in my view of that point. Um, but overall, I think it's fair to say that most people around football, most voices around football have all suggested that, you know, there's nothing in the game of any any mention, really. Um, you know, my overview would be I'm not worried about the protection of players because I think players get protected to a level that is, uh, un, you know, un, un, unbelievable in my history of the game and knowing football. And um, rightly so in some cases, I must say. Um, mine would be more the worry that he's questioning that a team shouldn't do everything they can to win a game within the laws, which we clearly did, because there wasn't a single card, I remind you, not a single card given out. So if fans, and I don't believe they do, by the way, but if fans want a game where there's not people giving their lot, not people showing some kind of physicality to win a game, I would be surprised if there's fans who want that, um, including the Liverpool fans. I know the history of Liverpool. I was a Liverpool fan as a kid, and still am, but more distantly as I've got older, quite obviously. 
And uh, you don't have to go far, let's say, to look down the annals of Liverpool's history to suggest they had a few players who might make sure they were fighting, not just playing, but fighting to win a game. I think it's fair to say they've had a few players in their time and they've still got a few now. If you like that sort of thing, watch wrestling. OTT, you like wrestling? No, that's up to that's up to him. His comments are what they are. Um, that's not up to me. Player manager use whatever words they wish to describe whatever they wish, um, you know, and see fit to do so. So I'm not here to question Jurgen Klopp. He's a he's a, a fantastic manager who's done amazing things at Liverpool. I'm here to just make sure that I look at my side of a view of a game. That's it in my terminology and my style. Are you happy with the new protocols? Because you thought you should have had a penalty at Anfield. Well, it's certainly, a, a, that, that, that is going to be the balance afterwards. I spoke of it. I'm very pleased with what happened in the Euros. And I, by the way, the feedback from most fans I know, I don't know all fans, but the feedback generally was very positive about that. Um, so I think it's a step in the right direction. But there is going to be a calling off period for referees because they've been so used to giving virtually every contact. Now they're being told to not give every contact. So there is going to be a bit of that. I don't think I over uh, cried it in too much with Dwight's moment. I, I felt it was a penalty just because... It's a clear push off the ball. If that's in the middle of the pitch, I bet he gets given every time. So that's more my view of that. But I don't think I cried it in. I just mentioned that I thought it was a penalty. I didn't throw my arms up and start, you know, going on about it. I just felt that it was a penalty. In lieu, especially in lieu of the penalties we've seen last season and in seasons previous, even with the new rules, of course, or the new thinking of the rules. Just finally for me, uh, transfer deadline day, sort of what, this time next week, well, next Tuesday, um, are you still looking to strengthen? You're linked with a Leon left back, a Celtic striker. What, what areas are important to you? No, we've actually decided it's better to work with as minimal players as we can. <laughs> so you do want to strengthen? You will be. It's doing fair to say. Better. It's fair to say if we get the chance to strengthen, we will be doing so. Right. Good luck in that area, then. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Thank you, Scott. Three views here, Thanks, Hi, Scott. Hi, Pete. Cheers. Oh, Scott, it's you an ages, uh, kid. Are you all right? I'm good, thank you, mate. How are you? Mm. Um, just to, just to think up on, I don't want to go down the transfer route, really, but in terms of the size of your squad, I know you've got real faith and trust in, in the players and that, that works both ways, but how <laughs> realistic is it to, to, to keep with this squad and ask them to go again without that additional bit of help? Yeah, well, for one, it's the immediate reality. Um, you know, the, the, you, you can go on about the idea of recruitment, but you, you've got to not forget the belief you have in the people you've got here. And I have total belief in the players we have here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, they've shown time and time again what they can offer the, 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 the team and the performances um, and the Premier League. Um, if we can find the right players to adjust that, we will do. It's never an easy task. I don't think it, it still is now. Um, Excuse me. The you know the new ownership of of bought into the the way the club was running, but obviously looking to add on to it, um, but not with pots and pots of money. That's always been made clear from myself, and it's always been made clear from them. If there's backing to be had, I think as long as it's appropriate, it's there. But it you know it's not an easy task. You know the the contract level we work at, the the fee level we work at. You know, in modern football, when you think of players, even now after COVID, moving for hundreds of millions, uh, well, at least 800 million per person, per player, then you think where well, we are in the grand scheme of it, it's very difficult and it remains very difficult. So we continue to search, we continue to work, we continue to try and get deals over the line. It's just not an easy process unless you've got bags full of money or, or someone who's going to write off that money. Of the players that you have brought in, Sean, how 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 did how the two guys settled in, and, and would you kind of expect them to be involved um, tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, both for different reasons. Wayne's obviously, you know, really seasoned pro, um, fitted in very well, um, good guy about the place as well, and I think so far he's enjoying what we offer. Um, you know, Nathan's a young young player, improving all the time. I like what he's going, the way he's going about it. Very solid young young man, in my opinion, and, and what I know about him. Pretty much left him alone, showed him a few pointers that I think are important as he's, as he's maturing. Um, but he'll be learning from the group and he's certainly doing that. And, uh, and we really like what he's about so far. It's such a settled pairing you have there, isn't it? At the, in, in, in central defence, it must be slightly um, quirky for him to know that there's a, pretty much a, a, a two that, that they're going to play most, most weeks. So that, I guess, is a challenge for him a little bit. But that is the challenge of football. You know, it's right there for you. Just because you move into a club, certainly people who have moved out have never guaranteed them a shirt. I don't believe in that. Um, Messi might have got one if he would have decided to sign. It was close. Um, but, 
you know, I've never done that. So therefore, you have to earn the right. And I think all players here, and, you know, people do forget Tarki had to sit for a time behind Michael Keane, who was doing fantastically well. And then look at the growth of Tarki and how he's moved forward. So, you know, we've had many cases like that. Pope is another one, of course, um, behind Tom Heaton and, and the like. So, you know, Nathan's still young. He's still learning. And I think he will learn from our environment. And I think he's enjoying it. In terms of, of, of Newcastle, Sean, uh, I, I guess at this stage of the competition, it's quite awkward to see where these games fit in. I know it's the next one, but the priority is always going to be the league, isn't it, I guess? Yeah, no, you know, I've never spoken anything other than my respect to the cup competitions, but it's just a simple fact for us. You know, it's, it's, it's the, the, the fact of Premier League football for Burnley Football Club, for the town, for the area. You know, it's a great thing. So it's just, I'm just trying to be realistic about it. I could give you a load of bluff and blag, but I don't think that would be appropriate. Um, you know, the fact is, it's another game for to win, of course. I've always made that clear. But it's a game to make sure you've got players who are fit, they're sharp, they're well, because, you know, the ongoing um, side of the league programme, um, we've already had a couple of injuries. We've already got two are out from last season in Longy and Dale. So that, that's not been great for us. You know, it's just a simple reality of the, 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 the fact of the matter and, and what's right in front of you. And that is that the league games always will be more important, um, certainly at Burnley Football Club. And just final one from, from the weekend, any kind of bumps and bruises, everyone, everyone come through it okay? Yeah, we should be okay with that. Um, we're still, West is settling down, but that one's touch and go. Vid's the same, touch and go. Dale's still out, Longy's still out. So, you know, that we, we're immediately back at, not quite stretched as we were last year, but certainly players who it would be advantageous, let's say, to have them fit and available.